Anyone else out there buy a product they don't want, a product they don't generally use, just for the jar? Yeah, that's me. And this is what I made with that coffee jar. I will drink the coffee if it means I can make things like this. So this is what I made. It's a stag lantern jar. Absolutely adore it. So yeah, if you'd like to see how I made this, stay tuned and let's get into the video. So to make this jar, I am using a coffee jar. You can use any jar you want, as long as it's big enough to get your hand in, so you can get a candle down in there. I'm using my Rust-Oleum White Painter's Touch paint. And to get my image, I'm using masking tape with a pen. And to decorate, I am using twine and those berries that I got from Wilco's. And you will also need a glue gun to stick those on with. And I'm using my laptop to get the image that I want. So the first thing I need to do is take the label off the jar and give it a really good wash. So the next thing I did for this jar was to go onto Google, find the image that I really, really wanted on the front of the jar. I'm sure there's more technical, there's probably machines out there that can do it for you guys, but all I have is a laptop and Google. So I found the image I want, which is a stag's head, just an outline. I literally typed in stag head outline, and this is my favorite so far. So I've just, it was really big on the screen, so I've just transferred it onto a Word document so that I can, you know, gauge you know, really the size against my jar, how big I want it. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. And this is where we get really technical, really technical. I mean, wow, technology here is quite mind blowing. I'm sure there's more technical ways, but this is how I do it. So I'm going to put masking tape over my laptop screen just so that I can get that image. And of course, when I draw, sorry, when I draw over the image, I am going to be pressing very lightly. So I am just using a really fine tipped black marker and I'm going to go all over the outline of that. Okay, now I've done that, I'm going to cut that out and that is fiddly because obviously the masking tape's super sticky, but I'm going to go and cut that out now. So I cut the video off, that was so, so fiddly. It kept sticking to itself. I couldn't hold it up here to cut. So I had to cut it down on the table, sort of sticking some to the table and cutting the edges, if that makes sense. There's gotta be a better way to do it. I'm sure there is. So the next step, you're gonna stick it to your crispy, clean jar. You wanna make sure that jar is about as clean as you can possibly get it. So I'm gonna stick it around about here, I think. Bearing in mind, I'm putting stuff on the top. So you wanna allow for that ratio. And I'm going to press it with every inch of my strength that I have left on a Friday night. And then it's time to spray the jar. You do have options here, people. So if you want it white, 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 like the one I've shown you at the beginning, then you want to do two coats of the white spray from a distance around about this far apart about 20 centimeters from the jar, two coats. If you want a really light dusting of white to make it look like snow, then you just want one coat, um, same distance, but just one coat. You also have the option of maybe making it frosted glass um, with some frosted glass spray, which I also have. And yeah, but I'm gonna go white, white. So two coats and then we'll come back when it's dry. So I have mine on the radiator to dry quickly. It is a very old tea towel, so don't worry about that. That is one of my tea towels that I use for my mess. So you wanna peel it off before it has too much time to dry solid, if that makes sense. I always worry it's gonna take some paint off when I peel it off. So I'm gonna go ahead. I just used some tweezers that I also use for my craft to peel that off before it gets too dry. And that is what it looks like once I've peeled that off. I actually really like it already. So I'm just gonna make sure that is dried absolutely solid before I try and stick anything else to the jar. And this is where the fun begins. This is where you can really make it your own. So again, I'm really traditional. So I'm going for those Wilco picks. These, oh, they're all stuck together. These um, frosted berries, some are frosted and some aren't. So I'm going to be wrapping these around the top over, over the top of some twine. We all know I do love a bit of twine. But you guys, whatever your color scheme, you go for it. You go for whatever you want. So this is where you're gonna need your hot glue gun and quite a lot of it. Oh, 
I'm gonna wrap it around real, not neat, you know, like I'm not looking for that perfection. A bit like my <laughs> some of my previous projects. I never really look for that sort of perfection. I just want something to, I guess, work against the berries, offset the berries a bit, wrap it around a few times until you are absolutely happy with the way that looks. And then you're going to just hot glue it at the back and have it there. I'm happy, you happy? Good, I'm gonna hot glue that at the back where we can't see all that mess. And I'm gonna cut it off there. But with these guys, what we don't want, we don't want this great big branch. So when I made this jar last year, you basically just rip them off. So you rip every single twig down and you get these smaller twigs. And that is gonna allow you to manipulate them around the jar exactly where you want them. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. I could literally do this all day, every day, guys. Every day. No, that one's not coming off. Next. So you just want to rip off several of these stems. And I've got a handful here, so I'm going to work with those. And I'm going to glue. So I'm going to go and start with the hot glue and just wherever you want them. So big dollop in the middle, little bit around. And yeah, we're going to start. So if you want, you can wrap them around your hand to get that sort of bent shape. And then just go for it. Place them on. Place them on wherever you like them. Oh, look, hand's in the way again. Hand is always in the way. I don't mean to do it. It just happens. Oh, and the next one you're going to place over so those gaps get berries. Oh, look, it's stuck already. Thank you very much for doing that. Little bit of glue in there. Make sure they're really firmly in place. And work your way around. And then, much like the picks I used on my garland video yesterday, you can manipulate these because they're all wired. They're all bendy, all wired. Lovely jubbly. So keep going around until you are absolutely happy with the placement and layer it up. I'll speed this up for you guys because, you know, I do like to take my time on these kind of projects. <laughs> Not necessarily all projects, but on these guys, I like to take my time and just move it all around exactly how I like it and manipulate it into place. So this is it with the candle inside and true Claire fashion, I don't know if this is a, just a bit too um, clear, a bit too see-through. So I'm going to have a go now, I'm just going to give it a quick spray of my frosted glass spray and hopefully that will just take the edge off and then you'll see a warm glow through the stag's face as opposed to a candle. And this is the result with the frosted stag's head. I actually really do prefer it, guys. Sorry I didn't mention the frosted spray at the beginning, but, you know, if you have it to hand, amazing. I hope you've really enjoyed. So let's take a look with the lights out. That's what I'm talking about. I absolutely love it. This is going to go in the center of my coffee table. I am in love with this. Yeah, knowing me, I might add some twine at the bottom, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It really was fiddly. Um, the only stag bit was fiddly. I did layer it up with three layers of masking tape in the end, just to allow it to be stiff enough for me to cut out. But I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you for the next video, and happy Friday!